Okay, welcome to SNC Podcast, episode 48. Yeah, uh, we have Jason Webb with us. So, yeah, how are you? Uh, I'm good, I'm good. Um, so you're part of Skeletal Press, which has a Kickstarter right now that is um, yes. to be ending yeah. very soon. Yeah, it's uh, seven, yeah, seven days left. Yep. Uh, all of a sudden, the last few days have been uh it taken a boost so to speak after the usual mid campaign lull of yeah really sitting watching it trying to will it into existence but over the last hour over the last few hours or so it's really taken a quad jump oh that's cool because so, i'm like looking at it cool. earlier like an hour ago or something and yeah there's still like 400 something dollars that needs it yeah, that's I'm like, how is this not funded yet? Yeah, yeah, we we've been struggling to figure out Facebook algorithms and uh, other campaigns running at the same time, yeah. yourselves included. Yeah, our, ours, oh, ours funded in the first day, which yeah. that was the first time that's ever happened for one of our campaigns. Yeah, yeah. but. It, then it was like dead <laughs> yeah. for like a week, at least yeah. a week. There was nothing at all. I was sharing it a lot. And then I got busy doing like the website stuff and yeah. a bunch of other stuff. So it happens. It's Kickstarter. It. So uh, what's the little elevator pitch for Rumble Kings? Uh, Rumble Kings is, well, this is the end of the arc. So we're moving towards hopefully uh once funded obviously I'm hoping to bring everything to the nice big cliffhanger that i know ryan's looking for because uh he's very much a fan of leaving people wanting more but it's uh an epic blockbuster swords mm-hmm. lots of fighting uh axes the usual kind of stuff but trolls, bounty hunters, a little bit of everything. Absolutely ideal for a movie series, yeah. TV series. So that was always that is always the aim. But I know for myself, I kind of do the business side more than I do the creative side. Yeah, so I didn't know. I've been looking at uh, looking at pitching yeah. uh, for animated series potentially. Um, because I know that's the way that Rumble Kings always feels whenever you read it. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, well, Dylan would be here, but he's like sick, I guess. Yeah. Uh, our, our like future goals is like shows, like animated shows, and yeah, live yeah. action, like Netflix yeah. style shows. And yeah. So, well, shows and movies, but um, yeah. I wrote our main graphic novel series to be like uh it was like in novel form and then i had turned that into a comic book form format and that was really annoying <laughs> to do <clears throat> and the first time when i turned it into a comic book format it was more of just a storyboard so it was more like a film script so yeah. it was yeah so yeah. that was like so the first ever person to ever touch it like art wise no one will ever see that ever again it's it's yeah. gone <laughs> and then the artist after that he didn't add everything that we had but it wasn't completely edited so i like don't blame him but i also blame him for certain things yeah. and now it's getting remastered and that's the last time i'm ever touching that issue ever again yeah. and um yeah i can't wait for that one to come out next year like early next yeah. year and then the second issue come out hopefully this year yeah i mean ryan has ryan is very much the creative side of the team he is always working on another project and another project i know just today he's pitched at least three in the last 24 hours to publishers uh so yeah he's constantly constantly writing but Rumble Kings has always been his passion. 
project. Um, he very much wants to bring this to life in whatever ways we possibly can. Um, yeah, our, uh, I, I just, I'm like the writer of all of them. Dylan yeah. has an idea for one like horror type thing, but it wouldn't be really yeah. to our universe because we have all this world building stuff that yeah, I yeah. actually, I don't know if I'll tell you about that or like keep you in the dark for some of that because, um, well, we can announce it now. Uh, so Dylan said he's like completely fine with like you guys like partnering with us. So yeah, yeah. So he's completely sure. fine with that. It's like once I mentioned that you would probably edit comics and he's like, oh yeah, okay. So that way he yeah, doesn't yeah, have yeah. to do that. <laughs> no, that's because yeah. he just doesn't have as much time as I have. Yeah, for just this because he has like four other things he's doing. He's doing yeah. his business, this um, and to uh, his brother's business, which is like a music producer type thing. And then yeah. there's a new one that he's starting with some other guy. So he's really busy. And uh, at the beginning of this year, I started to learn like how busy he actually was and i had to figure yeah. out we had to figure out when he could do stuff for this business so we picked sundays to be that day yeah sometimes nothing happens which is kind of annoying um but it happens like he gets sick or uh, yeah. he's just busy doing something else that's a little more important i guess well for him <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so well, I'm sure one thing you've learned from me is that sleep is very little. Yeah, uh, people think I don't sleep at all. I just work an overnight yeah. shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still sleep, but I yeah. guess I don't get eight hours most of the time. Oh, no, no, I averaged three, four, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm always constantly doing something. I, go, I get here at like 7.30, 7.38, every day that I'm like working in the morning and then I yeah. literally go to sleep like as soon as I get home then I yeah. if I can if I drink the right type of coffee because at work there's like if I have just yeah. regular coffee I'll, I'll be up I don't drink that much and then if I drink um, decaf which I have been um, I'll actually go to sleep when I'm, I should and then yeah. I wake up like 1 to 3 p.m. usually and once I wake up I start doing stuff for this so yeah yeah. So it's constant. Yeah. So um, you have a book called The Rejected stuff too. So. Yeah, yeah. I worked. Uh, I worked on The Rejected also with Stan Kanopka. Stan's creation. I was creative consultant on the book. Yeah. Uh, we did three issues. Uh, things are moving forward. Hopefully, with something new potentially. That's cool. Can't really say too much on that front because. Stan has a lot of people he answers to, whereas I kind of work with Stan. So I answer to him, but he's a scary dude. So. <laughs> uh, and uh, what was I going to say? Shit. Oh, yeah. Chronicles of Horror. So we yeah. fund, obviously we funded. So um, as long as everybody doesn't back out <laughs> on Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Um, the second issue is kind of starting to already be paid for. Yeah. So that's cool. If you get to 2300, we'll definitely have like a good chunk of money that we could pay to like yeah, artists yeah. and stuff. Uh, Hector, me and Matt, were actually talking about that on Tuesday. Yeah. Last Tuesday, we were talking about that. Um, how we we're going to pay like the artists and all that other stuff. Yeah. Because how we did it the first time was like a flat rate, but there's uh different things happening with this issue yeah. and onwards so yeah <laughs> excellent yeah um, well as you can see i have quite a passion for horror <laughs> yeah yeah um, you have a lot I'm of sure stories yeah um, uh they were trying to figure out how many stories were we gonna do because like i would i wanted the, i like planning things ahead i planned all i plan next year like things can happen next year obviously like yeah, coronavirus yeah. version two or Hopefully yeah. not, but um, oh, I've had enough with this one, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but <clears throat> so 
I planned all the meetings. So there's one meeting in November, the week, the Sunday before our like three day Comic Con thing that we're doing um, with our video game developer, my friend Scott. And that game was supposed to come out this year, but that didn't happen. Yeah. So, so we have a meeting with him about things that we need and whatever for next year and like where he's at right now, uh, at that certain point. Then we planned out meetings like almost every month, at least once each yeah. month next year. And then we, I picked a date for like the kick, Kickstarter launch. And mostly next year is based around our platform that just relaunched yeah, yeah, yeah. and the video game. But I would like the third issue of the Seer Chronicles to be out if that is possible. I'm not ever doing a Kickstarter again until the art is done. So that goes yeah. with like Chronicles of Horror and everything. I told everybody that. Uh, we wrote like guidelines and stuff that Hector is editing and Matt is still editing some of it. Yeah. But um, I told the people that were involved in this one, like issue two and on, like we're not doing a Kickstarter until like all the stretch goal things are made. Cause I had to make yeah. the Kickstarter page and all that stuff. And yeah. uh, I just use Canva and now I can't use it at work. So I have to wait until I get home to do it because yeah. they don't, um, let me use that website now for some stupid reason. It's just graphic design. The clock's you doing it. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, what's this that he keeps visiting? Yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to do stuff for my business. At least I can yeah. write still, so that's fine. Yeah, that's it. I just wrote issue four of Seer Chronicles. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's all written. It's just like I have to like rewrite it to fit into like the amount of issues that I would like yeah. for each story arc the first story arc is gonna have 12 issues i told dylan that because he's like oh what if we do like smaller issues and it would be kind of like a graphic novel and something like that for a couple yeah. of issues and i was like well we could do that i guess because like all of them from issue one two and three they're pretty long yeah. like he hasn't touched the third one yet but like it's probably still gonna be 30 something pages which it's not super long but he thinks it yeah. is and i was like I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I wrote the fourth. Because you don't have to sit and draw all. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, and he's like editing all that. Um, he's just like, yeah. Well, we're gonna do this instead. And I was like, okay, whatever. As long as it works with the story that I'm trying to get across. Pretty flexible on that. So yeah. Uh, I know. I know a lot of the art recently. A lot of artists seem to be uh, taking their time with things. That's uh, yeah. um, I'll just see some stories from people because oh. I pay attention to others. And uh, there's been a lot of I'm just waiting on the artist to do this. I'm just waiting on the artist to finish this other project, and then he's going to jump back into ours. And that's like ours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just obviously paying attention to different different projects and yeah different creators and stuff like that and different teams um our penciler for seer chronicles he's like super busy he's got like two comic stores i yeah. think and then he's got some other series or two that he's working on and ours yeah. which i get he has to do two issues of ours like the second issue was coming out before the first because technically like people already saw the first one besides yeah. the people so yeah. I get that, like, it's kind of annoying <laughs> um, if it's somehow not done. If the second issue is somehow not done this year, then I have something else already basically ready as long as, like, the anchor is, yeah. would be able to get it done <laughs> yeah. um, in time. Because uh, we have that solo series scales that's coming out, too. Yeah. So if by some crazy thing that the second issue of Seer Chronicles isn't done, I'll at least send scales and people yeah. will have that. I, I Are you looking to keep things on, on the platform? What? Are you looking to keep things on the platform for yeah. the comics? Are you um, looking at distribution? Um, or are you just going to keep everything, everything yourself? So the, everything that's on the platform will, it, well, it's digital and it's all free or whatever to like read. Yeah. Um, as long as like all the other comics that are on there too are free and the comics yeah. will always be free uh 
from now on. Once the coronavirus started, um, yeah, it was like March or something, I announced that, and Dylan's like, "Oh, that's actually a good idea." It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have because some people were confused about like this paywall thing. Yeah. And then we fix something else with it. So now there's no paywall at all until um, we add certain things like the video game and whatever else. Yeah. And then there'll be like the actual paywall. So essentially have... it's a Patreon kind of deal. Yep. It'll be like that, except uh, I don't want money taken from Patreon. <laughs> yeah. I, I would like all of the money. And then spread it out to like the creators that get their yeah. unique views or whatever. Yeah, of course. That's pretty cool. Um, and we have music on there now, and uh, yeah. I have to update that page a little more. But yeah, oh, in our podcast, so this episode will be up there. Um, yeah. It'll probably. Just, I don't know if it plays on the website or if it like directs you to the YouTube. I don't. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> I can't wait for all that. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on, man. Yeah. There's a lot. Uh, I don't know what else I was going to say. I was going to say something. What uh, What other plans do you have for, like, next, what, what are your, like, plans next year? We have a lot of things going that I genuinely would be shocked for talking about. <laughs> but um, we have... <laughs> For Skeletal Press, we are moving forward with uh, other projects following Rumble Kings. Uh, Rumble Kings in trade will be published by Rocket Inc. Studios. So we do all the issues independently. And then they pick up the trade and they publish through their, through their stores and through their conventions, etc. But we're looking to move on to other projects such as Rainer. Uh, and we've got a couple of other things that we're working on. I know Ryan's been, well, we've been pitching some ideas for work for hire potentially, for some licensed products, maybe. I'm not sure I'm supposed to tell anyone this, but. We got like 15 um, people that listen to this, so that's fine. No, nah, it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, as far as that goes, there is constantly something. I think me and Ryan talk more than we do to our significant others, so to speak. Um, yeah, we're always we're always back and forth. There's always something going on. Uh, I've been obviously I've been working with Ryan for. A little while. Uh, it was back sort of March, I think. And then I actually tested positive for COVID. Oh, shit. So I um, I was basically off my feet for three weeks. So I just poured everything into it. And I pitched all of Ryan's work and we got deals for just about everything. Uh, we got future deals for further projects. Um, so that's, as far as that's concerned, that is moving forward very nicely and very quickly. Uh, so we're looking new year to make some fairly major announcements. Um, rejected wise, me and Stan, well Stan's always writing something. Stan's very much a fan of horror like me. He is a... Uh, yeah, he's got he's got some pretty twisted ideas. Um, hence, what fell in with Stan in the first place. Um, so the rejected, potentially uh, collected editions. We're talking. We're talking about some extra content for that. Um, more poems and short stories. Not necessarily in comic form, but yeah. Um, but yeah, Mr. T is something we can't really leave behind for too long because the uh, well, he did he's very well. He did very well, and the whole rejected series did 
amazingly much better than we expected initially um so yeah it's not something that we want to drag our feet on particularly yeah and obviously on agenting as well for people and um you know yourself off i've been agenting for some artists and some novel writers also and some comic creators and making pictures for people so yeah i'm always doing something <laughs> always doing something <sighs> Yeah, so for Chronicles of Horror issue two, I said I think we'll have lurking, your story yep. lurking. That will definitely be in the next one. Yep. And because uh, they're like, well, how many stories are there going to be? Because <laughs> Matt's like, I don't want to get like thrown <laughs> off my own like creation. I was like, oh, no, no, no. Like Jason yeah. has like a ton. Like he, he could just be in the next one and the next one and the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. And I was like, yeah, I still have to figure out the whole partnership thing with Dylan. No, and Dylan just said, oh, yeah, it's fine. I was like, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to want to like talk to him or whatever. So, no, it's good. Yeah. So. Whatever, whatever we can work out. Uh, pushing both brands forward, obviously. Yeah. I was, this whole year, I was trying to find somebody that was like another, like a, another person that would actually talk to me as much as like Dylan would, would like talk to me. Well, he yeah. doesn't talk to me as much as he used to because <laughs> he's busy, but um, like Hector uh, or Matt, yeah. they talk to me like basically every day and you have yeah. been doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. So every night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I just, if I had someone to like actually talk to uh, and then actually work on other stuff while he's busy doing yeah. other things. Like I said, I'm a carer for people with disabilities. I have been for 14 years. Oh. I just got demoted from my team leader role, which was a lot of stress and a lot of extra work. And these last two weeks, I've just found a groove and is absolutely opening up no end of opportunities. So hopefully, uh, I can do a lot more. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, I can do a lot more. Yeah. I've seen some of the stories I've sent you have potential to open up into series. Yep. Yeah, I said that to uh, Dylan because he's like, "What would you? What would he like want to do?" And I was like, "Oh, he's down for a bunch of stuff. Anything. <laughs> Literally anything." <laughs> and he's like, "Oh," and I was like, "Yeah, he has like a shit ton of stories." And, um, yep. He would edit stuff, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've done edit, I've been proofread, I've, uh, I've pitched, I've uh, created a consultant, was my official title for the rejected. Uh, I've done research, I've, yeah, bits of everything, art direction. Oh, okay. Um, and I know some like editors say they don't want to know, like, I know one says they don't want to know any of like people's world building stuff because yeah. it kind of like helps yeah 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 so like i could it, either... it'd be essentially going into it blind makes yeah. a lot more makes it a lot easier for you to judge your story as it is yeah so I not could... what you're aiming towards yeah so i could keep you in the dark about a bunch of stuff like that and then you yeah be just like what and then like yeah <laughs> i wouldn't have to explain <laughs> this huge whole thing that we do with like absolutely I absolutely will listen to anyone <laughs> tell me about everything yeah. I have listened to anyone tell me about everything because I could I'll be, just like I'll if, sit and do world building with people and I'll, I'll sit and do character building yeah. with people so then like he, Dylan could like run through it like faster instead of having to like Cause I write the basic story idea for each issue yeah. and then he goes through it. Cause I don't add like camera angles and stuff. Um, yeah. He kind of does, even though like the artist, it's more of the artist job. Yeah. And uh, he's starting to get that. <laughs> Cause the one artist almost left the first day, yeah. like he started and I was like, Hey, Whoa, no, <laughs> don't go. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'll tell Dylan to like tone it down. And he's like, Oh, okay. But, um, 
Where'd you go? As well, I just stopped the video. Ah, so um, got a dog jumping all over me. Uh, yeah. So he adds like little things like that in our uh, comic scripts, and then then it's finally done. But um, if I have another person that does it, then it would just be yeah, absolutely. It would just be so much easier because <laughs> then yeah. I didn't I didn't start writing again for like a couple like a month or something because actually a couple months because like in the summertime he's like just stop writing (laughs) because we're behind on like what we have to edit and i was like we wouldn't be if like you had more time so yeah i needed to find another person i did so you uh, didn't that much as well i just won't let you go now (laughs) (laughs) um yeah so cool um where could people find you i social medias is generally jb web on pretty much everything uh jb way jbw entertainment is my facebook page skeletal press i also help ryan do some of the socials for that uh so i help him run the skeletal press page uh Skeletal Press 4 on everything else as well. Apart from Ryan's Twitter, which is 3 Cheese Nacho. 3 Cheese Macho. Oh, I was trying to tag him for like Follow Friday, and I was like, Yeah, no, no. Coming up. No, it took me a while to find him too. Okay. So, yeah, and obviously Kickstarter right now. Yep. We have seven days left. I'm going to put that in the description. So, like, if anyone's watching this. (laughs) Yep back it because they need to get their goal i mean we're only what under 500 dollars now um the last time i checked i can actually share the screen and i'll uh, find that right now i know ryan did just add a um a t-shirt an extra t-shirt yeah i saw that art by sefton moose as well it, i know obviously he's had it for a little while but he's been holding on for He's been holding on for later on to the project. Oh wow, it did go up. Nice. Okay, that's cool. Yep. So some of the, some of the tiers we added, um, they've been pretty great. To be fair, uh, the retailer tiers were a lot of the focus because we wanted to put the books into shops, and for all of them, it was. We for issue one, one to three, four retailer tiers, and then variant covers, and then some little extras as well. That's the store posters, that, that kind of thing. That's the one thing that we have to start doing on Kickstarter is um yeah. re- retail tiers. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I just haven't done that. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even see that. Yeah. Um, and that that's one of Ryan's favorites is the USB drive. Yeah. <laughs> that's um yeah. I'm looking forward to getting a couple of them myself, to be fair. I um, was going to do a USB for Chronicles of Horror, but um, yeah. I was looking at the prices for them, and it was like a lot for yeah. what we want. <sighs> but next issue, there's something uh, pretty cool coming. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, I don't want people to know that yet. <laughs> I'll tell you after I stop recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Well, th- thanks everybody for coming and uh, make sure to back Rumble Kings on Kickstarter. Seven days left. So, by the time this is out, it'll be like five days. Five days? It'll be like five days left. Okay. Cool. <laughs>